both of the trials that we'll discuss have been two-way. They were done parallel with each other. One was a treatment naive trial uh, that was done with just over two, two dozen patients. Patients with newly diagnosed neovascular age related macular degeneration treated with oral AKST 4290 dosed twice daily for six weeks after which patients were observed for an additional four weeks while off all therapy. And in that trial, uh, patients improved by an average of seven letters of visual acuity with a drop off of almost three letters after the conclusion of therapy through the four week follow up period. Uh, patients had no statistical change in central subfield thickness, but they interestingly did have a significant decrease in retinal pigment epithelial detachment height. Patients tolerated the drug well. There were only minimal systemic side effects, none of which required cessation of therapy. In the second trial done in parallel, uh, again with just over two dozen patients, uh, this was done in patients who were previously treated with standard anti-VEGF therapy and were deemed to be incomplete responders. Persistent fluid despite monthly therapy and visual acuity improvements of less than five letters. So in these patients, anywhere from 30 to 90 days after their last anti-VEGF injection, patients were then begun on again twice daily AKST 4290 oral therapy, followed for, uh, treated for six weeks, followed for an additional four weeks after cessation of therapy. In these patients, the visual acuity improved by a mean of two letters at the six week primary endpoint. Again, central subfield thickness changed minimally, but interestingly, after completion of therapy, when patients were off all treatment, the central subfield thickness increased significantly afterwards, suggesting the drug may have had an inhibitory effect on leakage while treatment was actually being administered. Once again, the drug was tolerated very well. No patients were forced to discontinue therapy throughout the trial. So if this is a substitute for anti-VEGF therapy, not a complete substitute, but if it significantly lessens the burden of intravitreal injections or significantly expands the, the time frame between injections or after initial therapy completely obliterates the need for therapy, then patients would not have to have injections into the eye with all the discomfort and risks that it engenders. Uh, they wouldn't have to come to a physician's office anywhere near as often, uh, so therefore wouldn't have to be a burden uh, on others to bring them to the office, and they wouldn't have to undergo all the anxiety, et cetera, that's related to intravitreal therapy. So what it does is it allows patients to be much more independent and lessens the necessary interaction with the physician's office, thereby allowing the physicians to see other patients who are need needful of uh, diagnosis and treatment for this or any other number of diseases. Interestingly, the potential advantage to oral therapy is what it may do therapeutically to the other eye, either in terms of treating both eyes simultaneously, potentially, and this is to be investigated down the road, as an inhibitory factor in the other eye, or since it's an anti-inflammatory, even whatever effects it may have on the development of geographic atrophy. All these are questions to be answered in future studies.